I'm Indy Nidell, and this is another edition of the Great War Channel's Out of the Trenches, where I sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and answer your questions about the First World War. Margot Pruhl writes, The body count seems to be enormous. It was. How did the armies collect or bury the dead in the battlefield and in the trenches? Well, they did it when they could. I mean, it was that simple. If you were able to collect and dispose of a body, you did it. But bodies often lay rotting in no man's land, and micro-truces would happen occasionally where people could go out and pick them up. For Britain, there was a guy named Fabian Ware, who we should definitely do a bio on. But Fabian Ware took command of a mobile Red Cross unit in 1914, and it became, by the next year, the Graves Registration Commission, and it was in charge of recording, designating, and marking graves. I imagine, though I may be wrong, that the other warring nations had something similar. I have a sinking feeling that a lot of Russian and Ottoman dead, especially in winter mountain battles, weren't buried at all and were just left to the elements. Rado asks, why did Bulgaria join the Central Powers and the Turks against Russia? Didn't Russia liberate Bulgaria from the Ottomans in 1878? Bulgaria had more immediate reasons to join the war than anything to do with Russia. In the Second Balkan War, in 1913, she had lost territory and wanted it back. So Bulgaria joined the war by declaring war on Serbia, having been told that if she attacked Macedonia and Austria-Hungary could occupy the rest of Serbia, Bulgaria would be given Macedonia. Also, Bulgaria's biggest trade partners were Austria-Hungary. Austria Austria Let's try that again. Okay. okay. Also, Bulgaria's biggest trade partners were Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire, so she didn't really want to screw that up. Both sides, though, had been trying to get Bulgaria to join them to have an ally in the Balkans, but the Central Powers offered a better deal. Galantir uh, writes, Would it be possible to get some information on the Scandinavian country's contribution neutrality to the war? Well, Norway supplied Britain with, well, all sorts of stuff, but also lost a lot of shipping to German attacks. A lot of Danes from southern Denmark served in the German army, and Sweden, well, a lot of Swedes still hated the Russians for taking Finland from Sweden, and a lot of Sweden was actually very pro-German. They gave a lot of money and a lot of supplies to Germany, even though they were neutral. Now, eventually, the Allied blockade started hurting Sweden, causing shortages and inflation. Now, this question's actually a little too big to answer just like this, so you should look it up. That's my answer. Obi-Wan Bull writes, Thank you for this amazing series. Uh, I have a question. Do you think if Russia had more than one ally in the Balkans, would she be as willing to mobilize against Austria-Hungary? Well, that's a really good question, but it's a really hard question to answer. Perhaps not, but still, the Serbs were Slavs and Russia was their big brother, so to speak. So I don't think it likely that she would have sat back and let stuff happen to Serbia, whoever else was on her side. I may be wrong, so this one, I'd be curious to hear other opinions right, so you guys should definitely write me your opinion about this. Pestulio07 says, You've mentioned the word casualties in several episodes when it sounds like you're not talking about people who were killed. Does casualty in a war setting refer to the loss of a fighting fit man and not necessarily an actual death? Casualties are not necessarily dead. It includes those who are killed and injured. Um, and a lot of you are asking in various forms what was the situation in Switzerland during World War I? The Swiss army at the start of the war was over a quarter of a million men strong and at the beginning it was mobilized and kept an eye on the Jura border with France and that's all they really had to do until Italy joined the war in 1915 and they moved troops to that southern border. Except for as a means around the Western Front trenches, though, there was really no reason to attack the Swiss. And once they believed they weren't going to be attacked, they disbanded something like five-sixths of the army. But remember, you had German, French, and Italian-speaking parts of the country, so they weren't going to just suddenly all support one side or the other, which really helped keep them out of the war. So, as a centrally located neutral country, it was a big haven for refugees and revolutionaries. This was where Lenin was before the Russian Revolution. So that's it for today. If you have other questions, which I'm sure you do, please leave them in the comments below or on Facebook and Twitter.